were the last session um, before lunch, so I don't think we have a problem with this. Um, okay, so this is configuration management in Drupal 8. Um, my name is Anja. Um, Stefan. Stefan. Um, okay, and the reason why we're talking about configuration management today is um, because we're currently writing a book about it. Um, we started in January, and um, I think we have seven chapters now, so we've um, uh, done a lot with it. So we kn I think we know a lot about it, so let's see what we can say. Um, basically, it's uh, not finished in Drupal. There's a lot we can say, but um, just we'll, we'll talk about how it's supposed to be. So let's see. What is configuration management? Um, is everyone here familiar with uh, what configuration management is in general? Just a little bit This is what WebChick said. It's like features in core only better. Um, we all deal with configuration in our Drupal sites. Um, Usually, um, it's in the database in Drupal 7. Everything, all configurations in the database, um, and that's really not a good thing. Um, so, and yeah, what kind of configuration management do you usually use? Um, some people uh, do database dumps from their local site to the live website. That's not good. Not a good idea. Um, things change, um, user sessions, even if you don't change your um, content, something will change and that's really not a good idea. Um, some people do manual configuration management or they develop on the live website, um, that's also not a good idea. Um, right, we have shell scripts and rush scripts or update hooks and uh, features, features module, so that's what WebChick said. Um, in Drupal 7, we usually um, save all our configuration to code, to files, using um, features and stronger modules. And um, yeah, the reason why we want to do this, um, have our configuration and code, is so that we can collaborate with other people, work with them, um, and see why things changed and when. And Right. Who did it? So these are some information types um, that are um, in Drupal 8 as well as Drupal 7, I guess. Um, configuration is everything that's not content. So um, the name of your site. This is something we will show in a minute. That's what I had up there. Um, content types, fields, and views. This is actually a really nice. In Drupal 8, everything you um, you add, a new content type, a new block type, any field is um, automatically saved to a to a file, um, so it's not in the database anymore. Um, content is everything that's not configuration um, and will not be in code. Image images files. What is that? Those are basically nodes. Article basic page. Those are that means nodes, not the content type. Um, there's sessions and there's um, state stuff that you don't need in configuration. Same with uh, features. You don't want the last column in in your code because it changes all the time. Okay. And this too. Um, this is just a, a small uh, look at a best practice for. Um, configuration management. So um, we, uh, in, in Drupal 7, we, we put everything in, um, in, in features. And um, you, you really want to version control that, because what you really want to know is um, who, who made the change and why and when. And this is just a small uh, screenshot from, I don't know if you can see it, um, from, a, from a real project that we do. Uh, Git commit messages starts with the issue number uh, and, a, and a good description of what was done. So 
so that you can um, yeah, see why it was done. And you always have the link to the issue, so you can read more about it. That's just a small little thing that you should keep doing also for Drupal 8. Um, and, okay, there's two ways that uh, configuration management works in Drupal 8. Um, there's the, the file stuff that we can't really show right now because it's currently broken in Drupal 8, but um, basically it, upon installation, right now it dumps all the, the, the settings files um, into a directory, and then you can move those to another directory and you see which files were changed. So there's also another um, way to do it, which is by using the, the Drupal backend. You can export uh, all your configuration and then import it on the other site. So this is what we have here. I'm just going to show it real quick. So um, we're using uh, simp what's it called? Simply test me. We have two sites. Um, currently, to get configuration from one Drupal 8 site to the other, um, you need an exact clone of the site, and we can't do that on Simply Test Me. So um, we have two different sites, and we'll just show a small part. We can't get the whole configuration over. So we have this one site with um, a correct site name, and we have this thing here, and we want to change the, the site name, which of course we could just do in the, in the settings site, but um, we want to show how configuration management works. So um, I'll just show you real quick the, the back end for it. Configuration. Um, these are the options you see. Uh, sy the synchronized tab is nothing we want to look at right now. Basically, if you um, imported site configuration, it will show here the files that were changed, and you have a, a little diff button, and you can see what was changed exactly, and then you have to import it. So, okay, um, this is the correct site, so we want to do, uh, we have to do a single export, right? Yeah, okay, export. Single export. Um, the full export gives you like a, a compressed um, dump, fi file dump directory, and the single one just shows you some text here. And we want to get the file name, simple configuration, is the configuration type, and um, system site is the name. So this is what you get. I'll copy this. and put it in here. Okay. This is really just something, um, I don't really uh, suggest using this in professional <coughs> development. It doesn't make any, any sense, but it could be useful for some people. I have to the right system site in here. So I just pasted the configuration. See here how can you see this? Uh, still the wrong name, and I'll just hit import. Hope it works. It worked on the it before. Okay, I have to confirm. We can already see it's the right site name. Mm -hmm. So that worked.
Well, you, you see it worked up here. Okay. Um. I have a question. Okay. Why it's not, uh, the, the name is not included in the configuration? So you have to, to type in uh, site, system site. System site? Yeah, yeah. why is it not included in the text? I, I think the single import export was um, made or included um, by request of some developers. If Danny Wiener was here, you might know. Um, this for views, it, it, it was some kind of use case for views. This is not something somebody would usually use. Um, you usually would use the full export import, but I can't show you that because you don't have the, the clone. And then you don't have to pick anything. So I think this will just be used by developers. And I don't know if that tab, tab up here is going to stay. Uh, this, every week, something changes in configuration management. Yeah. Um, okay, this doesn't want to load. So I'll just stop it. Um, so you you can use. Will that work? No. Yes. You can you can use an upload, but I don't think anyone in here would use that or should use that. Do it in code. You want to do it in code and use version control. Um, so you can actually track the change. Okay, um, this is going to get more technical and I don't really know what this is about, but um, Stefan will uh, talk about um, the structure of the files. I think the part we forgot in our presentation was what the directory actually looks like. Just silly, but that's also going to change. Right now, if you install Drupal 8, um, it will give you um, a directory, what's it called? Uh, active in stage, somewhere inside um, the files directory, and it gives you a whole lot of uh, configuration files in there. And, uh, what is that? Um, but it's really not that hard. But um, they're currently talking about um, not keeping those files. They, they want to, because there's so many things still wrong with configuration management, we're thinking about starting with configuration in the database at first until you export it. So whatever we say there, it's not really um, true yet. So um, configuration is saved in these uh, YAML files, and um, Stefan is going to talk about what is in them. So. Hi. Um, as Anya said, there are um, some directories where the YAML files are stored initially, and uh, there's currently a discussion on Google Org if um, the active directory should be dumped and um, the initial site configuration should be lit in the database again. Um, there are pros and cons. Um, pro of file directory is you can easily div the active directory or active configuration versus um, um, change configuration, but um, there's also some people saying um, you could easily break your site if you modify files in the active configuration file. And um, we will see in the next weeks um, how the decision is made and um, if we end up with database configuration or files as it is now. Um, Um, the YAML files, um, each module defining a configuration comes with a config directory. And in this config directory, we have um, at least one um, YAML file. The pattern is the module name and then the type of configuration. Um, is it readable or is it too small? It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. And, um, and the last path, optional, um, the mesh name of the configuration object. An example, if you um, have an image style and um, the file was named image, it's, uh, defined by the module image, then style, and then um, the configuration object, it's um, thumbnail. Or it can be large or whatever you uh, like to name your image style. And, um, Within this file, um, you see structured data. And um, if you're familiar with features export, um, it's 
spell spelling is the same. You know, different language, um, YAML is um, easier to read, I think, and um, you should easily see um, what the effects, image effects here is, what's the name, the label, mm -hmm. the image, and, um, and so you can easily write in your own module your own configuration and um, yeah, provide a simple thing. And um, you have to define um, the structure of your own um, configuration um, in schema files. Um, Drupal or the maintainers has decided to um, let each different configuration object have a single schema. So um, Drupal knows which data is valid and how to build forms from this configuration. An example to um, build translation forms for configuration, you need to know which label to put on fields and um, which data the field contains, if it's, if it's an <coughs> integer or a boolean or simple text. So you have a schema file within the config directory of each module and um, don't think you can read it from behind. <laughs> it's more. Um, for a good example, we have um, all the type of image style module and um, there are several configuration types. Uh, and you have um, simple configuration, it's a simple mapping where name and value of the configuration uh, property. And um, as you can see here, it's um, the image style name is of type string. And um, there's a UUID and a label. And so Drupal knows um, when building forms, okay, this is the text field, and I could um, um, add some effects to the image style. Of course, it's defined as sequence. And um, we have different types of um, configuration scheme types, I would say. Um, you can uh, build dynamic configurations and um, inherit from other types too. So you um, don't need to rewrite everything in um, the schema file. You can iterate from other um, data types and um, build complex um, configuration objects, um, as, for example, views does with its um, plugins and formatters and so on. Um, configuration can be easily um, created for your own module. You can um, either um, use simple configuration as a um, module name from setting, uh, dot settings, dot yaml, and um, you can also build complex configuration entity types. And um, there was a discussion last weeks, I think, um, to um, recreate image styles um, as configuration entities. And um, it's now in core, I think. And um, so if you ever have um, complex configuration with different properties and um, repeating um, Uh, repeating types of data in it, um, it's uh, best to create an entity, configuration entity, out of it and um, use this in Drupal 8. I will show you some very simple example. Um, you can see it or should I make it bigger? Okay. And um, this is the default info YAML for a small module with the name, description, and so on. And um, 
as you can see, we have also the config directory I mentioned before, and there's a simple file with only one entry, items per page. And this is the default configuration for our module. And if we install this module, Drupal copies for now this file to the active directory in sites files or wherever you uh, configured to have this directory. And um, this is the default configuration you already um, know from Drupal 7 with um, variable get. Um, every call of variable get can, hit, uh, can have a default value and this is replaced by um, the default settings coming from a module. We already have here a schema file, um, which is already, uh, also simple, um, only a type and a uh, label uh, to build up the form, and um, the items per page key, and we define it to be of type integer and give it a label for forms too. Okay, to build up a form for this, there's the um, booting YAML, and um, formerly in Drupal 7, we um, used menu hooks to um, create tables where our settings forms live, and for basic examples, um, you can use um, system settings form to um, create a wrapper around form and submit buttons, submit functions, and you don't need to bother um, for this saving of the uh, configuration. And now it's a bit more complicated, so we have to create a structure, create a um, class, and the replacement for system settings form from Drupal 7 is now config form base. And define some um, defaults for forms, for configuration forms, and you only need to define um, form ID and build up the form. It's already known form and type text field, but the main difference is now you have a config factory where all the configuration from the files um, can be accessed and. Um, um, in this example, you um, load the configuration from our um, settings file and the module name, then the config object. Um, it could be um, settings or um, image point style, uh, image dot style, and um, so we can access all the settings in this file in this configuration um, with this object and simply call get and then the value uh, the key of the configuration property you would like to use and um, I think it's very easy if you get the um, structure behind it and save is for saving on submit form you retrieve the config object and set value to the property and save it back to the file in Active Directory. Um, you could also use um, shorthand and say and then config and then config name um, it's shorthand um, but uh, config form base already has this um, initialized in config factory so you don't need to write this line okay um, any question about this Yep. What does the parent submit in the Nothing. Nothing, okay. It's uh, not an, um, 
So I confirm that. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> confirm that. Yeah. Yeah. Provide the same configuration. Um, they have configuration override system in Drupal 8, and um, the configuration with um, the higher weight you can define the weight for your configuration. And um, in Drupal 7, it's already um, the modules weight, it's already implemented, and um, it's sorted by modules weight and name. The same as for Drupal 8. But you can give it a um, higher weight for each configuration um, property. So you can say, okay, my module um, needs to um, override the default settings in any way and give it a, way and give it a weight of 100, and then um, this configuration is loaded. So you can um, have multiple modules defining or uh, overriding the same configuration, and um, yeah, the module with a higher weight wins. Um. Okay, I think we're done. Yeah. Uh -huh. I just wanted to say that there's a, a really good handbook pages uh, already. The first two um, are on triple.org that explain um, the system from a, um, a simple point of view as well as a more complex kind of point of view um, explaining the API and the different um, whatever you just said. <laughs> um, there's a, a website similar to the uh, Drupal Twig website that lists all the issues. They still need a lot of help. So if you want to help, uh, you can find the, the blockers and other issues on there. And um, there's also an IRC chat, and they um, they meet once a month, I think, uh, the Google Hangout meetings. Um, yeah, and that, that's really all we have prepared. But I, I feel like we were uh, not not so well prepared at, at the beginning, or what I said was a little bit unstructured. So if anyone has um, problems understanding what configuration management is or does in Drupal 8, um, feel free to ask, and I'll try to explain again. There's uh, features will uh, exist in Drupal 8 mm -hmm. to build uh, bundles of configuration um, stuff you, you want to reuse. Um, yeah. um, I think we don't really need to um, use features anymore. In Drupal 7, there's only uh, configuration module. It's a backport of uh, configuration management, or tries to um, create a backport. And if you would like to create a configuration bundle, you only need to um, use the files or uh, create a module, um, add default configuration files, uh, configuration overrides, and um, install this, and you're done. Yeah. It's like features. You can do that, but actually, so yeah. you can use features. <laughs> okay. yeah. You can use features to export this configuration into one module and. Um, it's it on other sides. Yeah. I think this will be possible. How will the configuration after deployment be installed? Um, there's this um, sync tab we will show. Yeah. I think it will show uh, since all the people installation.
you have this um, conflict directory inside default. Mm. This is the directory that gets created. Okay, sorry. This is the directory that gets created upon installation. It contains this weird long hash thing um, for security reasons, I think. Um, so um, by default, this gets placed inside sites default files. Uh, I don't think you want to keep it there. There's ways to move it outside of there when it doesn't work yet. So if for now it lives there, it might be able to live somewhere else in the future. Um, these two directories get created. Staging is empty and active is your current configuration. It contains like everything, everything, a lot of files. It looks scary, but it's um, not so bad. Bardic settings. Uh, it's tiny. So it's really not that bad. That's not where I wanted to go. Um, now, when you want to move this to your other site, you have to copy all the files that are in here and move them to staging. Um, then for now, you have to go to the import tab that we saw earlier in the back end, and it will show you the changed files. You have to move all the files into staging because if you um, don't copy some of the files, Google thinks they're deleted and will delete the configuration in your site breaks. You see conflicts there too? I haven't seen any conflicts yet because it's in such an early stage, but you, you see all the files that were changed and only the ones that were changed uh, or if they were deleted. And then you have to um, say, yes, I want to import all of this. Um, I don't really, I hope there's going to be some kind of Drush script that you can use later on so you don't have to go in the back end. Um, which Josh version do you have to use? <laughs> okay. What's the command? Okay. So then you, then you commit the stuff in, in Git, and then you have to have something, uh, a script on your server that uh, will import it. I think that would be easy. So uh, in my Git, I would only have the staging folder. Yeah, exactly. But th this is something that's still unclear to me, because um, staging on this server is, yeah, it's, uh, it's no, it has to be in, in staging on the other server, yeah. It'll, uh, when you import it, yeah. uh, when you import it, Drupal moves it to the active directory. So usually uh, active and staging contain the same files. And then you change something in staging, tell Drupal to import it, and then Drupal will move it to the active <coughs> directory. And then, so then both directories contain the same stuff again. So it's a little uh, hard to understand at first. But um, try it out and, well, once it works, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Breaks every time. <laughs> 